brothers and sisters, Al Imam Al Hakim reported, and it was classed as an authentic narration by Al Imam Al Albani on the authority of Abdul Rahman ibn Azhar, who is a cousin of Abdul Rahman ibn Awf. He said that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إنما مثل العبد المؤمن حين يصيبه الوعك أو الحمى كمثل حديدة تدخل النار فيذهب خبثها ويبقى طيبها أو طيبها The similitude of a believing man or slave rather when he is afflicted with an illness or fever, is like that of an iron rod. When it is entered into fire, its dirt goes away, and its goodness remains, or what's good in it remains. See, Allah Azza wa Jal, created us in this life to be tested whether or not we will fulfill servitude to Allah Azza wa Jal. الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم He who has created death and life in order to test you. أيكم أحسن عملا Who is amongst you? Who is the best in these? See, the, the issue is not the quantity. The issue is the quality. So this similitude in the hadith is reminding us of a form of a test or the tests that a believer goes through in this life. We're here to be tested. It's not a place of an eternal residence. It's but a passage to the eternal abode. And that eternity is one of two. And we get to choose. And one thing that helps a believer accept and be content with the decrees of Allah Azza wa Jal, the tests of Allah Azza wa Jal, is when he remembers and keeps reminding himself when he realizes that nothing, absolutely nothing, which Allah Azza wa Jal decrees, but there is goodness in it for him. It makes it easy when you know that you have something in it for you. When you're gaining from the decree of Allah, though at face value it looks evil, looks bad, looks harmful, but there are a lot of good things that result from the decrees of Allah. And one of these decrees, one of these tests, Allah puts us through in this dunya, is to get ill, to become sick, to catch a fever. And the Prophet ﷺ in the narration mentioned one of the benefits, which is purification. But there are many benefits in being afflicted by Allah Azza wa Jal, and especially being afflicted with illness or fever. One of the best, one of the most thrilling benefits of being tested by Allah Azza wa Jal is that it is a sign that Allah loves you. Anas radiallahu anhu narrated, and this is reported by a Tirmidhi class as authentic by Al Albani. He said, When Allah loves a people, He tests them. And it's enough for you to know, in order to know how much that love is. That the one who was tested the most from the creation of Allah was Muhammad. 
sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So that tells you. Another thing is something which we all strive to achieve. We work day and night to achieve. And it's given to you by being tested. Which is expiation of sins. Ibn Abbas said, Allah knew that his slaves will not be able to do enough good deeds in order to expiate their sins, which we do day and night. So he afflicts them with illnesses. Abu Hurairah, may Allah be pleased with him, reported, and this is narrated, and this is reported by a Tirmidhi, classed as authentic by an Albani. He said, Tests continue to befall, or trials continue to befall a believing man and a believing woman in their bodies, in their wealth, and in their children until they meet Allah with no sin. SubhanAllah. Don't we all work for this purpose or this objective to be achieved? Now this was a general hadith talking about being afflicted. In another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ gave some more details. It's also narrated by Abu Huraira, but reported by Muslim. He said وسلم, never is a believer afflicted with illness, exhaustion, anxiety, sadness, grief, or harm, even a prick of a thorn, except that Allah expiates his sins. In this hadith, the Prophet ﷺ combined between the two types of afflictions, tangible and non-tangible, physical and non-physical, right? Body, and then grief and sorrow and sadness, all of that is not something tangible. It's emotional or psychologi psychological, if you may, right? And yet he gives another hadith to give another detail, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, also narrated by Abu Huraira, reported by Muslim, rahimahullah. Abu Huraira said, when Allah azza wa jal relieved, revealed the verse, مَنْ يَعْمَلْ سُوءًا يُجِزَ بِهِ Whoever does wrong will be recompensed for it. The companions found this to be very difficult because su, any su, any wrong, that's indefinite, that can be very minor. Yes. You will be, you will be held accountable. So the Prophet ﷺ, when, saw, when he saw their situation as it was, and they felt overburdened by this verse, he said, قَارِبُوا وَسَدِّدُوا Do your best. Do your best. For there is expiation in anything that befalls a believer, even, listen to this, if his foot trips. How often does this happen to us? You'll be walking and you trip. You don't have to fall down. It's just that tripping. حَتَّى النَّكْبَةِ يُنْكَبُهَا And then, وَالشَّوْكَةِ يُشَاكُهَا And even a prick of a thorn. So this was relieving for the companions. And then he specified fever, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as in hadith Jabir, radiallahu anhu, reported by Muslim. He, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, visited Umm Sa'id, radiallahu anha, and he saw her shivering. He said, oh, Umm Sa'id, what is this shivering from? She said, it is fever. May Allah not bless it. He said, Don't revile fever. Don't curse fever. For it removes sins. As a furnace removes the dirt of iron. That's why Abu Hurairah used to say, The best of any illness that I might be afflicted with for me is fever. Because it goes through the entire body. And we sin with all our body. We sin with our eyes, with our tongues, with our hands, with our feet. And this goes through, so it cleanses as it goes through. 
another benefit, another honor rather than a benefit, is the nearness and company of Allah. In the book of Imam Muslim, in a long hadith narrated by Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, the Prophet وسلم, on the day of judgment would address one of his slaves and say, Ya Abdi Marid wa lam ta'udni. I was ill and he didn't visit me. So the slave would say, Oh Allah, how can I visit you? And you're the Lord of the worlds. He said, My slave so and so was ill and you never visited him. Had you visited him, you would have found me with him. This nearness of Allah, this special company of Allah Azza wa Jal to that ill person is an honor in itself. See, a, an ill person is weak and vulnerable, so he supplicates Allah. And the Prophet ﷺ told us that his supplication is honored and accepted and responded for. Another benefit, trials and particularly illnesses, do to you and me, is that it makes us realize the real value of this life. And thus, we become indifferent of it and approach our akhirah, the hereafter, and work for it more. See, Allah Azza wa Jal described the hereafter saying, وَإِنَّ الدَّارَ الْآخِرَةَ لَهِيَ الْحَيَوَانِ Indeed, the hereafter is the eternal life with no death. لَوْ كَانُوا يَعْلَمُونَ If they only knew. Right? While when describing the dunya, said, لَقَدْ خَلَقُنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي كَبَدْ We created mankind through what? Kabad, as one of the scholars said, it is nakad. Nakad is grief, difficulties. If you think you're going to live test free, then you need to find another place other than, uh, than earth and be something other than a human being. You're created and you will be tested. Right? The more you're afflicted, the more you realize that this world is not worth it. This life is not worth it. So Allah afflicts you with this illness or these diseases rather to make you realize that the real value, the eternal life after which there is no death, with which there is no grief, no hardship, is the akhirah. As the Prophet ﷺ told us in the hadith that is reported by Muslim, narrated by Abu Hurairah, that Allah جل, on the day of judgment, a call will be made for the people of Jannah. Oh people of Jannah, it is life without death, health without illness, youth without growing old, and bliss without hardships. Subhanallah. What more do we need? What more can anyone ask for to have? We work and strive fast, read Quran, pray in order to expiate sins on one hand and escalate and elevate our ranks in the hereafter. Well, illness does that for you. Aisha radiallahu anha, and this is reported by Muslim, said that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, never is a believer tested with something as little as a prick of a thorn and worse, except that Allah Azza wa Jal elevates his rank in Jannah. Sometimes Allah Azza wa Jal decrees that a believer will have a certain rank in the Jannah, in Jannah. But his deeds don't take him up to that level. What happens? Abu Huraira narrates, as reported by Ibn Hibban, class as authentic by Al Albani, that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah Azza wa decrees for some of his slaves to have a certain level in Jannah, which their good deeds do not take them up to. So Allah continues Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to afflict them in their bodies, wealth and children until they reach that level. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make us persevere through hardships, especially illnesses 
and fever and make, it, make us among those who are certain. Many a times we take things for granted. We take favors for granted. And one of these favors that we take for granted, and it's not as if it's not even a favor, is health. We don't realize that it's a favor until we become ill. As Ibn Qayyim said, he said sometimes a slave is heedless of one of, his, of the favors of Allah and for, in order for Allah to remind him with it, he takes it away from him. So when you become ill, you appreciate Allah. You appreciate the help He's granted you all this long time. You've become ill for what? Five years, 10 years? And you're 40 or 50? Well, you've lived healthy for 35, 45 years. So when you, whenever you, we become ill, we need to think and be very grateful that Allah Azza wa made us live that long period before healthy. And that this illness is not worse than what it is. Which leads to the second point. Illness makes you appreciate other ill people's sadness and pain. When you become ill, you start realizing how others feel. Just like the wisdom behind fasting, when you become hungry, you see how the poor becomes hungry on daily basis, while you only suffer during the month of Ramadan, if you want to call it suffering, that is. Well, when you become ill, and you look around you, if you're hospitalized, you look around you in the emergency room, or when you're an inpatient, you see other people who are afflicted with severe illnesses, you start feeling for them. You start practicing the emotions of an ummah as it should be. Illness is a protection against the fire of hell. The Prophet entered to visit, and this is reported by Abu Huraira. And entered with Abu Huraira to visit an ill man. So he said, Glad tidings to you. For Allah Azza wa Jal says about fever, It is my fire. I send it upon my believing slave in order for it to be his share of the fire of the hereafter. So whatever you suffer here, you save yourself from it there. This is a gift. And one cannot be looking at it in any other way but a gift. Fulfilling reliance on Allah and certainty. Certainty. When you become ill, you become weak and you realize your real size. You realize your need to the Creator. You realize that you're poor and He is rich. You realize that you are weak and He's strong. You realize that you're humble and humiliated Him and He is the Almighty, all exalted. So your heart becomes more attached to Him and your supplications to Him increase. Because it makes you realize that it is only Him who can take you out of this test that you're going through. <laughs> Repentance is something that Allah loves. In Allah, Allah loves those who often repent, frequently repent. Right? Well, illness is a form of test which makes repentance much easier. So when you're tested, or when we're tested, we shouldn't say, how did this happen? Whatever affliction befalls you, it's the result of what your hands earned. It's from us, so we need to start thinking, what sin did I commit? What did I do wrong? How did I upset Allah? So He tested me with this. And this is how the Salaf went, right? 
Yazid ibn Maysar, and he's one of the junior tabi'i, said Allah Azza wa Jal tests the believer with an illness. And this believer might, or this, a slave rather, sorry, a slave with illness, and the slave might not have had any good deeds with Allah Azza wa And then during this illness when he becomes weak and closer to Allah, Allah reminds him with some of his old sins, which results in his repentance. And he said, then a drop of tear, as small as the head of a fly comes out of his eye, which results in the purification of his heart, the expiation of his sin. So if he continues to be alive, he will be alive sinless. And if Allah was to, re to make him go to death, to cause him to die, he would die sinless and pure. Sayyid ibn Musayyib, radiallahu anhu, the senior tabi'i. He was entitled Sayyid al-Tabi'i, the master of the tabi'i. He said, I entered with Salman to visit an ill man, Salman radiallahu anhu, al Farisi, to visit an ill man. And then Salman said to him, Glad tidings to you, for this illness is a means of expiating your sins and a means of reminding you with your sins. Therefore, you will repent. So when we become ill, we need to take this advantage. We need to take advantage of this opportunity and work on our hearts, softening them, bringing them close to Allah, and remembering our previous sins and their plan. One last thing I would like to mention, or maybe two things. The first is a narration that is reported by Al Bukhari, narrated by Abu Hurairah. The Prophet said, When Allah wills goodness for someone, He will test him. Listen to this beautiful comment of Ibn al-Qayyim rahmatullahi alayhi. He said, when Allah wills goodness to a slave, He sends on him these trials, illnesses, and to cleanse him from this filth, meaning the sins, in order to prepare him to two honorable positions. The first honorable position is in this life, which is the position of being a slave, fulfilling servitude to Allah. And the second position is preparing him to be deserving of, of seeing Allah Azza wa Jal in Jannah. We ask Allah to make us deserving of seeing Allah Azza wa Jalla in Jannah. Allahumma lahum. 